From NBC News, this is Today with Bryant Gumbel and Jane Pauley. We'll talk to a business consultant this morning who's found a correlation, he says, between the way businesses and civilizations rise and fall. Says you can put the lessons of history to work for you in your own business career. In history, for corporations, it's what you are if the last quarter was flat. But Lawrence Miller, a management consultant, says the lessons of history could help you get ahead. Barbarians to Bureaucrats is the name of his book, which contends that corporations follow the same predictable life cycle as the rise and fall of civilizations. And good morning. Good morning. Uh, quickly give me an idea of what that cycle is from beginning to end. The cycle begins in the beginning with the word, the creative act. There's a prophet. Uh, in the beginning of civilization, societies, and in the beginning of a corporation, there's the creative genius, never a good administrator. You know, Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, uh, in a corporation where people, Thomas Edison said, my business is thinking. Uh, he was bankrupt 11 times. He was a slob. He used to spit on the floor. He chewed tobacco. Uh -huh. uh, his wife bought him a spittoon, which he didn't use. When asked, he said, the spittoon, it's hard to hit, but the floor, he never missed. I wonder whether he could survive General Electric today. Henry Ford? Henry Ford, a prophet, was kind of a crazy guy. He had a vision. And leaders lead by articulating a positive vision of the future. And that's, that's one of the lessons of history that our executives need to learn. You chose uh, examples from our um, history, of at least the 20th century, but are mm -hmm. there modern, the contemporary prophets around? Sure. Uh, Stephen Wozniak at, at Apple Computer. Um, most people who start a new company on a new idea are prophets with, with the creative idea. All right. Lee Iacocca got in this book one way or another. You call right. him uh, the conqueror? Or the Barbarian? The Barbarian, yeah. Well, you know, dur during most of his career, he was an explorer, the sales guy, you know, expanding the territory. When he took over Chrysler, he did what needed to be done. He was both a prophet, renewing the faith. They had lost their faith. And he was action-oriented, decisive, fired 33 vice presidents within the first year. It had to be done when, when you need to turn a company around very rapidly. You need a Barbarian, the action-oriented one. Not the one you'd most like to work for, by the way. Oh, the, the, Harold Janine of ITT has the dubious distinction of making your book by virtue of his being, in your term, a bureaucrat. During the declining stage of the life cycle, if you picture the rise and fall, a, a bell-shaped curve, during the decline, administrative systems and structure take over from the substance and the spirit. Managers are now more concerned with conforming to the numbers, the history of past performance and past creativity, rather than creating new products, new services. All right. Is someone like a Janine uh, doomed uh, by his fate, doomed by history, to be the bureaucrat, or...? I don't, I don't think so. I, I think if our, our executives understand that the tight grip of control tends to drive out creativity. Last summer, my 16-year-old daughter went to the Soviet Union. She uh, spent six weeks talking to Soviet youth. When she came back, I said, what's the difference between Russian youth and American youth? She said there, they don't have faith in their ability to accomplish things. They believe in the system. They always talk about the system. Well, in a lot of our corporations, managers and people talk about the system. That's bureaucracy. She had discovered bureaucracy. Janine believed in control, the numbers. That's what bureaucrats do. They crucify and exile prophets and barbarians, the mechanism of creating wealth. They're now impotent to create wealth. Frank Lorenzo, you call him the aristocrat. Is, is that a good thing or a bad thing to it's, be? Every revolution in human history uh -huh. has been produced by aristocrats, not revolutionaries. Revolutionaries were the response to the stimulus of aristocrats who don't have affection and affiliation. Alexander the Great rode at the front of his companions. He loved, there was a love affair between Alexander and his army. Affection and affiliation. The aristocrat is aloof and detached. Marie Antoinette, let yes, them eat cake. off with their heads, exactly. And it is that response, it is that lack of love for the people and that lack of communication and connection. Frank Lorenzo... But wait a minute, the shareholders will love him, no? Well, no. Frank Lorenzo's been losing money oh. uh, incredibly. Mm. So, who or what can save the day if a corporation is not uh, uh, destined to go from, uh, from the profit to the barbarian to the, you know, in the cycle right. to an end. Can an end be reversed? Yes. The, History the, could repeat itself. <laughs> well, you, you know, the lesson, here's the lesson, and it's the hope of barbarians to bureaucrats, is the synergist, is my hero of the story, who has the hope of the day not to be followed by night, the continued upward progress without the decline, by recognizing the value of diversity, unifying diverse styles. The style, we need the prophet, the creative visionary. Well, where who, is he? 
Well, she. Where is she? There, there are some. There are. <laughs> I think today at Xerox, uh, Mr. Kearns is a is a, yeah. a, a synergist. I yeah. think at Dun & Bradstreet, Charlie Moritz is. I think there are others who are who recognize the value of different styles and different qualities, and and creating a team that synergizes, brings together. You wouldn't want a team of all perfect administrators. Everything would be neat and orderly, but you probably never if have a good idea. If I wanted a neat and tidy career of job security, I'd like that bureaucrat, even if it didn't mean a success for the, for the company. Y you might think so, but the truth is, if you, if you were in a bu bureaucratic organization, it looks secure, it feels secure, but they've driven creativity out. It's why it's never a mess, but it's not growing. You want to find a neat person, go to a morgue. They're perfectly flat, even. So I might cause any little, trouble. live dangerously and look for a barbarian? Well, I think, I think you want a company that's maintained its creativity, where people are experimenting, people are moving forward. Leaders lead by recognizing and responding to challenge. Mm -hmm. During the 50s and 60s, American corporations achieved what Arnold Toynbee called a condition of ease. That's what leads to decline. Well, this leads directly to a commercial message. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back after this.